Hi folks, this is Darren with My RV Works. Uh, today what I'm doing is a series of, of Dometic refrigerator uh, diagnosis, troubleshooting, repair, recovery, those types of things. And so what I'm going to try to capture on this video is I'm going to focus on just the heating element how to diagnose that it's failed, and how to replace it. Um, so without any further ado, let's jump right in and get busy getting that thing fixed to keep your refrigerator cool. Here's your heating element right up here, okay? It's the one that goes in the boiler. We're gonna be pulling him out, okay? So, but it all starts over here. These black wires that go to the heating element start from this control board. So we're gonna unplug this. Now, I like this little tool right here because I can reach behind these prongs and just pop this right off. Just gotta get them right off there and pop them off. So now I have my heating element loose. Now I'm gonna isolate just the heating element. So I'm gonna move you around and show you this side over here. Now, what you would have done to have determined that this heating element has failed is you would have done an ohms reading on it. Um, you'll need to get your manual for your refrigerator. Uh, one resource we can offer is on the myrvworks.com website. We have a resources tab and on that resources tab we have a, a service manual library and we've created that so it's searchable. So in this instance you would do a search for Dometic, type in the model number for this refrigerator which is a 3862 and it will pull up the service manuals and whatever manuals I was able to have and upload for you. Um, if you were to do that and you would navigate those pages, you would find, I wrote it down on my little piece of paper here, you would find that this particular heating element, the, this refrigerator calls for the spec of 325 watts. I have done service calls where they put the wrong heating element in. It's either too much or too little. So we gotta make sure we're doing everything to spec. So what we're expecting on this is 325 watts and 44 ohms. Well, where does that number come from? Right out of the manual, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to put this in the ohms, the omega horseshoe symbol. So we know we're looking for 44 ohms. Now what I like to do is on these connectors, I like to come in from the back side. Um, I don't like, I, I, sometimes you have to come in on the front side, but if you can all, and I'll avoid it, please do, because you're going to separate these out a little bit. So polarity does not matter when you're testing ohms for these heating elements. So just plug it on on the back. And so here I have my connectors plugged in on the back and I'm getting a value of 42.4 ohms, and the spec says 44 ohms. So this, now we're gonna use our imaginations. Let's pretend that we didn't get that value. Let's pretend that this was open like that, as if to say the wire was broke or the heating element had failed on the inside, okay? So just a little side note, there's nothing wrong with this heating element, but let's pretend, okay? Um, so, oh gee, look, we're plugged in and, and our heating element is, is failed us. We're supposed to get 44 ohms and we're getting none. Oh shoot, okay, well, we're gonna have to replace it. Let's get busy. So now we've determined that our heating element is bad. Winky, winky, okay. And uh, so now we need to access the heating element. Now, this particular refrigerator, this is the boiler, and they have this long slot that they give us right here. And we're gonna, we're gonna remove this slot and you're gonna find this little metal tab right there. Okay, and you're gonna pull that back. I'm using the same little hooky tool, which I like. Okay, we're gonna pop that off, okay? And then this whole thing's gonna raise up, and come out just like that. So here's that little tab, and here's the slot that he was in. Slot at the top, slot at the bottom. Let me set him over on the side so he's out of our way. And then what that leaves us here is the heating element and a little groove in our insulation because we're going to pull this thing straight up okay and uh we're going to pull them straight up now this particular one is a little seized okay so because he's seized we're going to have to fight him a little bit and what i like to use is a little bit of catalyst a little penetrating oil um what i happen to have with me right now is pv blaster but you could pick yours whatever you want of choice okay so what we're gonna do is squirt this right in the top where he's, okay, so he was running. Pretend he's not steaming right now. Okay, so I'm gonna let that catalyst work for a few minutes and uh, then I'm gonna come back and see if we can't get him. Okay, look, he's already starting to wiggle a little bit. And I'm just gonna let that work itself in there, work itself in there, work itself in there. There he comes, here he comes. And 
There he comes. There we go. So now we have our heating element in all of its glory. Okay. Now written on here somewhere. Let's see if we can find it. Okay, it's up here on the back of it. It's going to tell us 325 watts. I don't know if you can make that out, but I'm just going to translate for you. 325 watts, 120 volts. Gives me a part number. So let's just pretend that this guy had failed and it's time to put a new one in. Well, find a little spot that he goes in. There's a little socket that he goes in, a little pocket, a slot. Drop him right back inside. So this would be our new heating element, right? Now make sure we align them straight up and down. That's kind of the key. And you see how he just slides right in there? And he'll bottom out on you. He'll, he'll hit to the bottom part. Okay, folks, so we got the new heating element in and we wanna make sure that our insulation is all tucked back inside, okay? And then we're gonna put this cover back on. Long slot first, up on the top. Slower slot. We're gonna close around there. Okay, we're gonna find our tab. Push that over, okay? And uh, here's our new, brand new wires. Okay, remember using our imagination that there was something wrong with this heating element. And uh, let me let me pan you over a little bit so you guys can see what we got going on here. Okay, so we got a new heating element in. We've got all of our tabs in place. Uh, this particular refrigerator has these little groovy uh, latches, but sometimes you can use tie wraps right there. Now on this particular heating element, polarity does not matter. And we're gonna plug that one in. And we're gonna plug this one in on our control board. Okay, and then we're gonna plug in our refrigerator. We'll go inside and turn it on, and then we'll verify that he's gonna work for us this time. Okay, so let me go do that and I'll be right back. So now that we've replaced our heating element, we've got a clamp on meter. We're gonna clamp around it, and we're seeing that that is consuming 2.79 amps. Um, as long as you have current flow through the heating element, yeah, it is a very, very safe assumption that the heating element is working. Um, now, this would have been, in this instance, a brand new heating element. So we know that, and, and we know that it was 325 watts, and we could use Ohm's law to get the values. But um, there you go. Okay, folks, so all I really wanted to do on this video is capture how to diagnose a heating element, get the correct one, pull it out, Put a new one in okay so if this was helpful to you give me a thumb up subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of stuff i'm always doing service calls out here and share it with your friends so this is darren signing off until the next video see ya